It's the quarterfinals of HCT Toronto, and Hunter Ace finds himself in a pretty good spot. He's up two games to nothing over his opponent, Silent Storm. He's bringing Combo Dragon Priest to battle today up against Cube Lock. So kind of a combo versus combo matchup, yeah? Both of these players have the ability to do lots of burst damage, kind of kill out of nowhere if they draw the right combinations of cards. But both of these decks can also grind it out as the game goes long and play for alternative game plans. There's lots of very powerful cards in both decks, so we don't necessarily have to be playing for a combo win from either either side of the table. So Hunter Ice is coming into his turn four. He's got himself a Cabal Talon Priest, and he's got a buffed up Northshire Cleric. He kicks off the turn by playing his Shadow Visions, and he hits Inner Fire, Power Word Shield, and Divine Spirit. A really good pool of three cards to choose from, but also a really tough decision. What should we be going for in this spot? Each of these cards is kind of declaring a different plan in this game. If we take that Power Word Shield, we're saying, no, we're not ready to do combo stuff yet. We just want to be playing for the board a bit, cycling through our deck. We take that Inner Fire, we're saying, I want to kill you right now. I got one Divine Spirit. I got that Inner Fire. I have a Twilight Acolyte. If I find something like a, a Potion of Madness, or if you don't stick any top minions on the board, I'm going to try to kill you with a big minion right now in these next few Few turns. Taking that Divine Spirit says, I'm going to go for the big combo. I'm going to go for a combo that either requires a Radiant Elemental in play, or for you to not have any taunt minions or a relatively clear board, and me to have a minion around, you know, six health, at which point I can cast Divine Spirit into Divine Spirit and then kill you. To do that, you're going to need two Divine Spirits. Uh, it's going to be harder to find that second Divine Spirit than a copy of Inner Fire, since we already have one Divine Spirit in our hand. So if that was the game plan you're going for, you're going to take that second Divine Spirit. So what do you want to do? What, what's, our, what's our plan this game? We have to decide that kind of right now. Is it plan A, take Inner Fire and go to, for building a big minion in these next few turns? Is it plan B, take Power Word Shield, play for the board, try to draw through our deck a little bit more and go for an alternative win condition? Or is it plan C, get that Divine Spirit and try to go for a combo kill, ideally before the game gets too late and we're going to see that Cube Warlock play things like Blood Reaver, Ghoul Dan and get these big nasty boards that are, are going to be hard for us to fight through. So which card do you take? Is it the Inner Fire, the Power Word Shield, or the Divine Spirit? Oh, quickly. Hunter Ace goes for the Power Word Shield, and we're going to see why by stepping through this game and really breaking down what his game plan is for this matchup. He has a very specific one in mind, and this Power Word Shield is the best card of the lot to getting him towards accomplishing that game plan. So let's fast forward a few turns over to Silent Storm's turn 7, where we can see that Skull of the Minari was able to power out not one, but two demons onto the board. He's got that Void Lord and the Doom Guard. Now, even if Silent Storm didn't have this skull into multiple demons, a big game like this is frankly something that Hunter Ace should be expecting out of a cube lock deck. He could have easily had a possessed lackey, a cube could have came down, done its thing by now, gotten multiple doom guards out there. But this is something that Hunter Ace is well aware of. And it's also something that Silent Storm is well aware that Hunter Ace is well aware of. Silent Storm is going to reduce the health on his Void Lord intentionally, knowing that there is a combination of cards out of Hunter Ace on the following turn, which could kill him if he leaves it at such a high amount of health. It would involve an Inner Fire, which we can see that Hunter Ace doesn't have at this point in time, but it's a smart play nonetheless by Silent Storm, and one that you would expect most top players to make. However, this play does set up a two-card combo at a Hunter Ace, which he does have in hand, Twilight Acolyte into Potion of Madness. Now, normally, people would be thinking about those two cards in terms of stealing an opponent's big minion and then using that minion to kill an opponent out of nowhere in a single combo, but Hunter Ace is thinking about it more in terms of a long-term strategy. What he wants to be able to do is take away the Void Lords from Silent Storm, keep them out of the pool of demons that can be respawned by Blood Reaver Ghoul Dan, and then punch them in and get that Death Rattle trigger of his own to kind of gum up the board with those one threes and build up a board of his own that he can try to combo with. If we fast forward things a few turns, we can see that Silent Storm was able to draw that second Void Lord, get it down off the skull, and then drew a cube just in time to be able to double down on those Void Lords. Setting him up in a pretty good spot. Now he's got at least one Void Lord in his death pool for Blood Reaver Gul'dan, which we see in his hand, and he's got two Void Lords that his opponent has to deal with. So 
What does Hunter Ace do in this spot? Well, the same thing he did last time, except even better. He's able to hit a cube of his own off of the Draconid Operative, steals one of the Void Lords, and then cubes it himself, which is a nightmare scenario for Silent Storm. That's been the plan, really, for Hunter Ace from the beginning. Uh, not necessarily to always hit that cube off of the Draconid Operative, though I think it would be fair to say that he was expecting or hoping that to happen. But the plan certainly was, in his eyes, you win this matchup, by taking their Void Lords away with our Potion of Madness plus Twilight Acolyte combo. And seeing as he'd lacked that Potion of Madness and didn't hit a Potion of Madness off of the Shadow Visions, that Power Word Shield that he took was the card that's going to get him closest to this game plan. Another reason that it might be smart to take the Power Word Shield here is that Hunter Ace is going to need multiple cards to be able to combo off anyways. So if he takes either of these cards and then draws the wrong second half of that combo, he's going to be sitting on cards that he can't really use proactively. Whereas taking this Power Word Shield, it's going to draw him a card, it's going to buff up his board, it's going to let him tussle with things here better than he could without it and guaranteed, which is important when we see him sitting on this Northshire Cleric. As long as he can keep that thing alive, his hero power is going to keep giving him a bit of board control and keep drawing him cards, getting him closer to finding those vital combo pieces and allow him to kind of build a combo as he goes on the fly, which to me sounds like a much safer and more conservative plan than going for a combo that you may or may not even draw yet. Now, all of this isn't to say that taking the Power Word Shield is 100% the right decision. There were a few spots, looking back on this game, where had he taken the Divine Spirit and then drawn into an Inner Fire, or vice versa, he would have been able to set up a kill at some point in the mid-game. But as we saw, he didn't draw in to the other half of that combo. It took him a long time to find an Inner Fire this game. That doesn't mean that taking an early Divine Spirit and trying to go for the combo is necessarily the wrong plan. But as you can see, this is an example of a game where, given the way that things played out, it was smart to just take a card that you can use consistently to play to the board to keep your Northshire Cleric alive and keep drawing cards and play to a later safer game plan. Now this game plan won't always work. There will be times where the Skull of Inari is just going to plop down a Doom Guard, and then the Doom Guard gets cubed, and then blah, blah, blah. You guys know the rest of the story. And there will be times where taking the Divine Spirit will lead to the Inner Fire kill. So unfortunately, we can't really just say, oh, you should always take this card off of Shadow Visions in the early game in, you know, generic matchup A or generic matchup B, because it is so context dependent. But I did really like this game plan at a Hunter Ace. It really demonstrated an alternative way to exhibit the strength of your deck to take advantage of some of the weaknesses of the opponent's deck and things did kind of break his way and he was able to punish Silent Storm for not having cards like Cube exactly on time despite the fact that he was able to power out demons so quickly. And that'll wrap things up for this episode. If you guys have a suggestion of a play that you would like to see on What's the Move, please, by all means, I welcome that you go ahead and link that either here in the YouTube comments or you can send me a message directly on Twitter. I am at Aleko underscore P. See you next week.